If you want to know why our mainstream media is not doing what it did during Vietnam, when, for instance, in 1968, even Walter Cronkite, probably the top icon with the highest level of, of viewership in the country, was brave enough to go out on, on nightly news and say the Vietnam War is unwinnable. Now, what's different now? We don't even have our media asking questions about the wars and the disastrous foreign policy. Of course, extremely disastrous to the poor countries that are the victims of our drone bombing and torture and, and uh, endless war, but actually now beginning to be disastrous even inside the United States. Uh, you know, they always say the sorrows of empire. So we are seeing uh, the corruption and rot of our own government. We're seeing the, the breaking of law, the Constitution, that actually affects us directly. So why is not the, the, our mainstream media asking these questions? Well, I think the, the underlying reason and the difference between Vietnam is that the powers that be, largely the military-industrial complex, uh, they call, you know, actually it's the military industrial congressional complex. They thought long and hard how they could end Vietnam syndrome. And the Vietnam syndrome was what they, they attributed their loss in Vietnam was not fighting hard enough, not continuing that war, which could have also been become a perpetual war, just as we're in now, um, not enough lives lost, etc. They attributed that to Jane Fonda to Walter Cronkite, Daniel Ellsberg, and the you know hundreds of thousands of people that were marching, that were occupying uh, uh, university buildings, etc. And so they they did try to conquer Vietnam syndrome, and they've been pretty successful by ending the draft, by making the costs of war invisible, the economic costs. Now we've got a 19 trillion dollar debt, but it's on a credit card. It's on a national debt card that just escalates up. And people don't know that if they were to make us pay for the war right now, it'd be something like $100,000 per family. If that was the case, if we were paying for this war rather than putting it on a credit card, it would end tomorrow. No one would even, no family would probably even be willing to pay $1,000 for, for wars. And then the last thing is why we're here today, which is they developed a policy of drone assassination. They legalized it in memos. And uh, this makes, uh, uh, it, it almost eliminates American casualties. The only thing we have now are the wedding parties in Yemen and Afghanistan. There are civilians, many women and children, but we are not having American casualties. Well, for, for Americans, that makes them care less. And, uh, you know, it also makes war easy, so to speak, this ending the Vietnam syndrome. And I think that is what we're confronting right now. And I, should, I said there's no, Amer I said there's, it, it reduces the American casualties. The American casualties that do exist are the 23 veterans that are killing themselves per day. And, and, uh, and even now, some of the remote drone pilots are, are really speaking out because this has caused them to, to uh, suffer from PTSD. And some of them are becoming suicidal. So, you know, this is not a cost-free. Wars are not cost-free. They are blowing back. And it's going to require people like uh, us we aren't going to be able to rely on our mainstream media, at least for a while. We're certainly not going to be able to rely on an elected politician. It's up to us now to educate our neighbors and friends and try to counter this mainstream media, you know, government entwined, military entwined propaganda, even owned by military industrial co companies like Raytheon and GE, they actually own media. So yes, it's a complete conflict of interest and it's not hard to wonder why. They basically run government press releases and, and government authorized leakers like Scooter Libby, runs right to the New York Times, plants information, they don't have any problem running that. They have more problems listening to whistleblowers, uh, people that are, or, or frankly investigating themselves, the facts. You know, if we would have gone back to um, Woodward and Bernstein during Watergate, uh, they actually had to delve into the facts. So well, where do you see the media doing that now? No, they're afraid to go up against power. So I think one of the things we'd like to do, I have a little postcard. Um, Here, I got it. Okay. Oh, we uh, came up with this postcard to ask questions. What would $1 trillion a year buy instead of war? 
And I think if you answer these questions, who died, who lied, who pays, and who profits, war will end. If the media, if more people just ask these questions, if our, our candidates seeking to be leaders would answer these questions, we could end war.